sorry. I'm so sorry. Hey everyone, I'm Ben Schneider. And last time on this series, we talked about Syndicated Millionaire. And if you've seen that video, you might recall that I made a couple of references to Deal or No Deal in there. Most notably, I theorized that the inspiration for Millionaire's Tournament of Ten may very well have come from Deal or No Deal's Million Dollar Mission, as NBC was entering its fourth season of the show, still looking for its first million dollar winner. So today, as we continue this series, let's take a look at why winning one million dollars on Deal or No Deal is almost impossible. Most of you probably already know how Deal or No Deal works, but since it's been several years since its original run, I'll go ahead and explain it anyway. On its most basic level, it's a glorified version of pick a number between 1 and 26 and let's see what happens. Now, on the surface, you might think that the chances of winning the million dollar prize are 1 in 26, which, while not exactly great odds, is still a number that would make it far from almost impossible. But there's a lot more to Deal or No Deal than just picking one of the 26 cases. Otherwise, each game would take no more than two or three minutes. Instead of simply opening the contestant's case to find out what's in it, the contestant has to open the other 25 to find out what's not in it. The contestant starts by eliminating six cases from play before getting their first offer from the banker, who offers to buy the case for somewhere in the range of the average of a case value still left in play. The contestant has to choose between saying deal and accepting the banker's offer, or saying no deal and electing to play on. These extra steps are what makes winning the million dollar prize almost impossible. You don't just have to select the million dollar case. You have to be enough of a risk taker to make it to the end of the game, overcoming the fear that you could open the million dollar case at any time, drastically reducing any potential winnings. Obviously, some contestants are much bigger gamblers than others. But for most people, if the million dollar case is still in play, it's much easier to justify the risk of playing on and going all the way to the end of the game if they have a large safety net. Me, personally, I wouldn't have a problem turning down an $880,000 offer if the two remaining cases were the million and the $750,000. I would, however, have a problem with turning down an offer of $400,000 and change if the two remaining cases were the million and the dollar. No Now, thank goodness the banker gave Richie Bell a $10,000 bonus during an in-game challenge. But even then, most people aren't willing to justify a risk like this. The producers must have realized this because a couple of years into the show's run, plenty of contestants had chosen the million-dollar case, but the show still didn't have a million-dollar winner. So in an effort to guarantee one, NBC launched what became known as the Million Dollar Mission in Season 3. For every game the million-dollar prize wasn't won, the highest non-million dollar case value would be replaced with an additional million dollar case. It eventually got so desperate that at the height of the million dollar mission, 13 cases held the million dollar prize. Katie Henslin legitimately had a 50-50 chance at becoming a millionaire. The only problem is with how her game played out, after opening the penultimate million dollar case in the final round, her final two cases came down to the last million dollar case and the $200 case. Henslin wisely took the $449,000 offer, and even though her case ultimately held the million, you can't really fault her for playing it safe. So, we're through three whole seasons of Deal or No Deal in primetime, and we still don't have a million dollar winner. Take a guess at how NBC started season four. Just, just throw a guess out there as to what they did. Season four, it's a history-making season. In honor of the first show of the fourth season, tonight our first player will have four one million dollar cases in their game. Yep, that's right. Another million dollar mission. Thankfully, this one would prove to be more successful, as it crowned the show's first and ultimately last two millionaires. Jessica Robinson became the first contestant to win the million on September 1st, 2008. Robinson was given $5 million cases to work with. With two cases remaining, she turned down a $561,000 offer for a 50-50 chance at either the million or $200,000. While $200,000 is still a great payday, $361,000 is still a lot of money to put at risk. But Robinson was willing to do so. And in her case, it paid off for her.
Now, despite the fact that the Million Dollar Mission had succeeded in crowning Deal or No Deal's first Million Dollar winner, the show continued the mission for several more weeks. Less than two months later, they'd find their second millionaire, Tamara Rodriguez. Rodriguez had the luxury of $9 million cases in her game. And she also had the benefit of the greatest safety net imaginable. With four cases remaining, Rodriguez had the $300 case and $3 million cases left in play. By opening the $300 case, she wouldn't even need to go all the way to the end of a game to become a millionaire. And that's exactly what happened. You are a millionaire. Ultimately, the fourth season of Deal or No Deal would be its last, at least in its original run on NBC. During that final season, a new daily syndicated version popped up that lasted a couple of years, but that version only offered a $500,000 prize. Deal or No Deal would get another revival on CNBC in 2018, and while the ratings were quite good by CNBC standards, the prize budget was certainly on the expensive side for cable television. And with that, this revival only lasted one season and didn't create a third million dollar winner while it was on the air. So what's the takeaway here? Well, as we said at the start, your odds of winning the million aren't exactly 1 in 26. Otherwise, we'd have seen 19 million dollar winners, and I probably wouldn't be making this video right now. In order to feel comfortable playing the game all the way through to the end, you'll need to keep the high amounts in play, even if you don't open the million dollar case. Let's say you want the best safety net imaginable, $750,000. The odds of you picking the million dollar case are 1 in 26, which means the odds of a $750,000 case being the other final case left in play are 1 in 25. This means that the combined odds of both picking the million dollar case and leaving $750,000 on the board are 1 in 650. I don't think I can tell you the exact odds of winning a million dollars on Deal or No Deal. The odds will depend on a contestant's luck and level of comfort in risk taking. But I can tell you this. Even when there's more than $1 million case in play, pulling off a seven-figure win is almost impossible.